Hello my lovely students how are you all a very hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is rupa sharma and today we are going to do the book that saved the earth yes we are going to read about a book that saved earth from a martian invasion so it's a lovely chapter it's about to play okay it's a play basically and when you'll read this play you will actually find it quite familiar because these kind of books these kind of you know comical strips you used to read when you were quite young when you were you know children basically and there are a lot of scenes which would appear to be very funny so it's a comic chapter and you will be able to relate with a lot of characters here in this chapter here in this play we are going to meet a character we are going to meet such a toxic box boss who is Uh, always trying to take the credit of his you know employees and you know this is what we are going to see so now let's start with the chapter see we'll have an overview we'll talk about the characters we'll do the line by line explanation as usual and word meanings also we are going to see and then in the end we are going to discuss the important key points but one thing more children you know we are also going to discuss the question papers from the sample paper okay the question from the sample paper okay there is a question which is from your latest sample paper i guess this is not clear to you so let me write it again okay children it it's from your latest sample paper okay so now let's start it see the book that saved the earth is written by clear boyko so clear boyko he is the writer of the chapter he is a fictional comedic drama about a nursery book called mother goose so it's a fictional a uh, comical drama so it's a drama and it's about a nursery book called mother goose as i told you that the book that actually saved the earth was not you know a file of you know uh, great missiles it's not an encyclopedia it's not something which is quite dangerous but it's just a simple nursery book and how a nursery rhyme book you know saved the earth it will form the plot of this chapter The play's plot is set in the 20th century and it depicts an attempt by a Martian named Think Tank and his crew to attack Earth. See, as I told you, see, it's about Martian invasion. How Mars is, you know, planning on invading the Earth in the 20th century. Although this chapter is based on the 25th century. When we start with the play. when we start with the play we are talking about the 25th century you know the conversation <laughs> takes place in the 25th century they go to the flashback they talk about the 20th century when you know mars tried to invade on earth but it was stopped because of you know this you know legendary nursery rhyme book that was mother goose so now now let's find it out see when you read this play you know when you read this play you will find you know you will actually think you what you have to do is that you have to imagine each and everything you just have to assume that as if you are sitting in the audience and you are just looking at this you know play you are looking at this drama because that is the only way that you are going to love this chapter and the plus point with this is you know the setting is given very clearly here the time is told the place is you know told and the whole situation is explained to you very well see we are going to meet a very important character here and that is think tank as it was written in the overview here we meet think tank think tank is basically he is the owner of mars not owner of mars but he is a king of mars he is the commander in chief of mars and you know he is like that toxic bo boss who takes all your credit and he even talks to the mirror if you have seen you know snow white and the seven dwarfs so you must have seen there that you know that person used to talk to the mirror the lady there the lady the mother of you know the stepmother of snow white she used to talk to the mirror and she used to ask to the mirror that who is the most beautiful lady in this world and the mirror used to say that it's you it's you my madam so it was a magical mirror so here also we'll see that think tank is so much you know what can we say that he loves himself so uh, so much he is so much you know into himself that he thinks that he is the most intelligent he is the most beautiful he is the most handsome person on this whole in this whole world so now let's meet the characters so the first character that we come across is a historian 
historian he is a member of the museum of ancient history and the department of the 20th century so first of all the chapter starts the play starts with a historian historians means that a person who talks about history and she belongs at he is a member of the museum of ancient history and the department of the 20th century and you know uh, they tell about the 20th century that how the things were in the 20th century then we talk about think tank as i told you we have you know i have said enough about think tank that he is the commander on in chief of martian forces and he prepares to invade earth his you know purpose is to invade on earth his purpose is that he is going to find you know uh, the whole information about earth in one day and then he is going to attack on earth because according to him earth is very primitive earth is not advanced like mars and it would be very easy to you know invade earth it would be very easy to you know take control over earth then we meet noodle so noodle is also another very important character the name of these characters you know they are quite you know funny and they are quite you know different but you will soon uh, get a catch of it see noodle he is a he is a trainee he is a trainee under think tank okay he is a sensible and level headed figure captain omega lieutenant iota and surgeon sergeant and op they are the crew of probe 1 they are sent to earth to know about earth before invading it see let's first talk about noodle noodle he is you know he is a trainee under think tank he works under think tank and he is very level headed he is very level headed it means that he is not you know um, uh, he is a very you know uh, sensible person he has you know some brains in himself and you know he doesn't talk to the mirrors and he is not uh, like you know uh, think tank that uh, think tank is always you know boasting about himself and he considers himself as the most important uh, you know most intelligent person whereas noodle noodle is self composed person he is quite nice okay so what he does is that he uh is the main character who actually you know who puts some sense into think tank and then we meet captain omega lieutenant iota and sergeant op all these characters are the crew of probe 1 and they are the ones who are sent to the earth so we'll see the think tank and noodle they are on mars okay they are on mars they are sitting uh, uh in the mars control center mars space control center and they are giving instructions to all these people captain omega lieutenant iota and op and they are you know present in the earth to gather information about it so uh if we talk about think tank we can also use a lot of adjectives for think tank like he was you know a self centered person he was self obsessed okay he was quite egoistic there as we talk about noodle noodle was level headed okay he was level headed he was sensible he was smart he was intelligent okay so now let's talk about all these so now uh, as i told you that we are going to just feel that as if we are sitting in the audience and we are just observing this play and uh, so uh, it's possible because we'll also see the setting of the play okay like first of all we see the time what is the time the time is the 25th century first of all the scene starts with 25th century and what is the place the place is the museum of ancient history department of the 20th century on the planet earth so what do we see here in the 25th century they have made different departments of history wherein they have explained that what kind of things happened in uh, you know uh in those times in those centuries for example they have a separate one for the 20th century they must be having a separate you know museum for the 21st century and 26th uh, second century and so on and so forth so they have uh, this thing then they are talking about before rise before rise before rise the setting takes place before rise before rise be means before rising the curtain so as you know if you have ever seen a play in uh, any movie or if you have seen the play in real you must know that there are curtains so the uh, role of the curtains is very important that what kind of a scene you see before the curtains and when the curtain rises you know you see a different scene you see the actual uh, thing that is taking place then the curtain falls and another then again the curtain rises and after the curtain rises the scene changes so whenever there is a shift in the scene the curtain falls and it rises again so before rise what we could see spotlight show, uh, shines on historian who is sitting at a table down right 
on which is a movie projector a sign on as easel beside her reads museum of ancient history department of the 20th century she stands and bows to the audience so okay so what happens is spotlight sh spotlight shones see uh, spotlight you understand uh, that what's a spotlight spotlight is basically a kind of light which falls on you when you know everything is dark on the you know uh, you know stage and you know a special spotlight falls and it is only focusing on the person who is in the center so it's falling on the historian and what is the historian doing she is sitting she is sitting and there is an easel behind her easel means there is a kind of a board there is a kind of a board there is a kind of a setup see like just like this okay as you can see you can just consider like this an easel okay and everything is written here so what was written on the easel it was written museum of ancient history department of the 20th century then she stands and she bows to the audience okay she was just basically you know it was kind of a salutation to the audience that you're welcome here then Good afternoon. Welcome to our Museum of Ancient History and to my department, Curiosities of the Good Old Far of Twentieth Century. The twentieth century was often called the era of the book. Good afternoon. She says good afternoon to all. She addresses the audience and she says that a welcome to this museum. Okay, welcome to this museum. And what we are going to do today is Curiosities of the Good Old Far of. far off it means that we are talking about a century which has which was far off okay it's been a very long time it's been a long time and we are talking about the 25th 20 uh, 20th century which was also called the era of the book if we really think about the 20th century it was all about the books okay it was all about the books everything that we read are from the books itself now the things have changed in the 21st century we have you know laptops and mobiles and we have you know various you know ipads and everything to read uh, the different things we have different different sources but earlier we only used to have books in the 20th century so that is why she is telling that this is an era of book in those days there were books about everything from ant eaters to zulus books taught people how to and when to and where to and why to okay she so she was telling that there were different kinds of books there were books ranging from ant eaters ant eaters she is saying that basically the books were about the animals and from animals to the south african people zulus means the south african tribal people so you could find books on each and everything books taught us that when the thing pl took place why the thing took place when where or how it gave us all the answers so for all the answers there was only one answer and that were the books even if i remember of our time see when we didn't, didn't have google and everything so you we used to search you know everything in the books in encyclopedia if we had to find any meaning you can just simply type it down you know and you can find it on google but earlier you used to you know use dictionary i don't think so that <coughs> you know people use dictionary nowadays but if we talk about the 20th century everybody used to use the you know books then historian says they illustrated educated punctuated and even decorated but the strangest thing a book ever did was to save the earth so she is telling about the importance of books she is saying that they illustrated they gave illustrations they educated they punctuated and even they were decorated they were used for decoration they decorated but the strangest things that the book has ever done any book has ever done was to save earth from martian invasion it had saved the earth from a martian invasion she says yes it happened in 20 20 uh, you know 2040 it happened in 2040 and then she is wondering if the students have ever read about it and she said have you uh, never really you know learnt about it okay what do they teach the children nowadays don't you really know about this martian invasion then she says well this invasion actually didn't take place because the invasion was saved by a book by a single book what was the book then she asks then as you know the person the host they try to connect with the audience okay so that is why she was also trying to connect with the audience and then she asks are do you really know that what kind of a book it was so Uh, was it a noble encyclopedia a tome about rockets and missiles a secret file from outer space no it was none of those it was but here let me turn on the historiscope and show you what happened many centuries ago 
in 2014 we already know that it was a nursery rhyme book but she hasn't disclosed it yet and she has left it to the audience she has told that yes it was this then she took a pause and then she told that first of all before telling you that which book it was i am going to tell you that what really happened in 2014 she already has a projector ready and she is going to show the movie to the audience she is going to basically tell the audience that what really happened and she is using a historiscope for that historiscope is just similar to a uh, you know microscope and everything like we have microscope and telescope you know uh, like similarly they had historiscope and historiscope that would actually show them the history so we can see that obviously there we are talking about 25th century and in 25th century the world is quite the world would be quite advanced he turns on projector and points it left spotlight on historian goes out and comes up down left on think tank who is seated on a raised box arms folded he has a huge egg shaped head and he wears a long robe decorated with stars and circles a printer's noodle stands beside him at an elaborate switchboard a sign on easel reads now what she does is that she turns on the projector and the projector the light basically falls so here we could see a scene and what we could see it falls on historian uh, it falls on think tank and think tank is seated on a raised box and his arms are folded and what kind of a person is think tank they are telling the physical description of think tank so think tank is a huge person and his shape is like an egg egg shaped head and he is wearing a long robe he is wearing a long robe he is wearing a long dress kind of a thing which is decorated with stars and circles and we could also see the apprentice noodle apprentice basically his helper his you know the person who is working with the, you know the other person or under someone is called an apprentice so apprentice noodle was also uh, there and he was having a kind of a switchboard so in this chapter we are going to see that noodle is operating a kind of a switchboard the similar to the one you can see uh, you must see in the hollywood movies and all you know they have a control room sort of thing even not only in hollywood movies but in bollywood movies as well if you have seen mission mangal so you must have seen that what kind of uh, you know uh, electronic equipment equipments they have in the space control centers uh, isro and nasa so they have you know kind of switchboards which actually controls everything so noodle is having the control of that switchboard so mars space control great and mighty think tank commander in chief bow low before entering so this is written uh, written on the easel so easel is basically a board and on that board is given a description of the scene that where the scene is taking place and which place it is so the place was mars space control like we have you know isro like we have nasa in uh, you know uh, available on <laughs> earth they have the mars space control and who is the person who is uh, the commander in chief here that is think tank and it is written great and mighty think tank okay he has used adjectives for himself he has you know he is a self you know obsessed person that is why he is he has written like that and bow low before entering he supposes that you know everybody has to bow before him because he thinks that he is quite intelligent the noodle noodle bows and he says a great and mighty think tank most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe what are your orders so now we are going to see a kind of a salutation here you know the people who are you know self obsessed uh you know they expect that the other person is always praising them and you know we can see here that think tank before you know talking to think tank uh this thing noodle says he says that oh great and mighty think tank you are the most in powerful and intelligent creature what are your orders but think tank peevishly says peevishly means he is irritated okay irritated he says you left out part of my salutation apprentice noodle go over the whole thing again so what we see here that he has a whole thing planned out he has you know a whole part of salutation that actually noodle leaves now you know when noodle was appreciating him you know think tank should be happy but he was not happy because he thinks that a part was missing then it shall be done sir and in a sing song in a sing song basically you know he is singing while saying this 
O great and mighty think tank, ruler of Mars and her two moons, most powerful and intelligent creature in the whole universe, what are your orders? Then he repeats the whole salutation, which makes think tank happy, basically. So think tank, as I told you that he's a self-obsessed person, he wants everybody, you know, to call him like that, you know, salutation. He wants such kind of a salutation from everybody. Then Think Tank saying, that's better noodle. I wish to be placed in communication with our manned space probe to that of to, to that ridiculous little planet we are going to put under our generous rulership. What do they call it again? See, Think Tank. Think Tank says that's better noodle. Okay, and he starts, he wants to have a communication with the manned space probe. See, you know that, you know. We sent a lot of missions on other planets, like, you know, even our technology is, you know, so much advanced these days. We spend, you know, we send missions to, you know, moon or the other planets and we, you know, continuously do that. But sometimes we send manned missions. Manned missions means when the people also go there, because the manned space probe, the first space probe, manned space probe to moon was when, you know, Neil Armstrong and Yuri Gagarin, they went to the moon. It was manned. It was manned. You know, people went there. So here also we can see that some people have gone to Earth and he wants to have a communication with them. And he says that, you know, a ridiculous little planet. And he's also calling Earth a ridiculous little planet. Because he has a very, you know, he doesn't think very highly of Earth. He has a very low, you know, image of Earth. And he says that, you know, and we are going to give our generous rulership. Generous rulership, it means that we are actually doing, you know, a favor to them. Because we would be, you know, ruling on them today. So Noodle says, Earth, your intelligence. Achoo, what do they call it again? Now, he says that, what do they call it again? He's just, you know, acting like that. What do they call it again? And Noodle tells him, it's Earth. Okay, it's Earth. Then Think Tank says, oh my God, how insignificant the place is. Because I don't even remember its name. It means it's very, it's a very insignificant place. But for something important, my mirror, I wish to consult my mirror. Now, as I told you that Think Tank, a self-obsessed person, he even talks to a mirror. So he commands him that bring me my mirror. Then think tank, mirror, mirror in my hand, who is the most fantastically intellectually gifted being in the land? As I told you that the mother, the cruel and uh, the cruel stepmother of Snow White, she used to talk to the mirror. So he, even he is talking to the mirror and he's asking mirror, mirror, tell me who is the, who is the most fantastically intelligent creature in the whole world? And offstage voice. See, the voice is offstage because nobody is saying that. They're basically trying to say that the mirror is actually responding. So a voice from offstage comes and it says, it after a pause, it means it doesn't immediately come. It comes after a pause and he says, you, sir. Then think tank smacking mirror. He's smacking the mirror. He's basically hitting the mirror. And he says that, slow, quicker, answer quicker next time. I hate a slow mirror. He admires himself in the mirror. Ah, there I am. Are we Martians not a handsome race? And then he looks at the mirror and he's like, oh my God, you are such a, you know, you have to answer quicker. He gets angry because the mirror took some time to respond. And he's saying, you know, I hate slow mirrors. Then he admires himself and he looks like, oh my God, how smart, how handsome I look. And then Think Tank says, so much more attractive than those ugly earthlings with their tiny heads. Noodle, you keep on exercising your mind and someday you'll have a balloon brain just like mine. Now think tank, think tank, as I told you that he's a self-obsessed person. So he's saying that, you know, I am, you know, we are so much more attractive as compared to the earth, you know, earthlings. Earthlings are the people who live on earth. So he's saying that, you know, earthlings, they have, you know, very small heads. They do not have big heads. And he basically likes this feature of his that he has a big head. And he even, you know, gives a suggestion to Noodle that Noodle, you should also work on your mind. You should also exercise your, exercise your mind. And the more you'll exercise, the bigger your head will be. It means on Mars, it was considered that the people with big heads are, are basically wiser.
but here in india here in here on the earth we see that the people with big heads are basically uh, big head is a word used for the foolish people you know in basically in america or everything there is a slang language for big heads you're a big head you're a big head it basically means that the person who is you know who's not intelligent who is a foolish person but here it's contrary on mars the people with big heads are considered to be even more intelligent noodle oh i hope so mighty think tank i hope so noodle obviously noodle it's his boss so he has to you know he has to you know relent he has to talk to him like that think tank now contact the space probe i want to invade that primitive ball of mud called earth before lunch now contact now he's basically uh, you know he's uh, advising think tank he's commanding think tank that you know i must talk to the earth now today we are going to you know attack on that primitive ball of mud primitive ball of mud primitive means not advanced you know not advanced okay not at all advanced and noodle noodle also says that he you know he does some adjustments on the switchboard and you know he tries to get a contact with the you know uh, uh, probe station uh, sorry the space probe then the scene changes and then time time is a few seconds later then the place is mars space control and the center wheel public library so here we are able to see two scenes one is of mars on mars it's mars space control center and in earth or uh, they are in the center wheel uh, public library at rise at rise means that the curtain is rising and after the curtain rises we can see what we can see Captain Omega stands at center opening and closing card catalog drawers in a confused fashion Lieutenant Iota is up left counting books in a bookcase Sergeant Ob is at right opening and closing a book turning it upside down shaking it and then riffling the pages and shaking his head so what actually happens is that these three people you just have to remember their name the first name is Captain Omega Captain Omega she is a girl so captain omega captain omega is opening the drawers and she is looking at some catalogs she is confused because they actually do not know anything about books basically they are in a library and they have never seen books in their life they are confused at what basically it is and the other person is left in a diota left in a diota she is counting the he is counting the books he is confused at what do we have to do with the books and then we see sergeant op what is sergeant op doing sergeant op is just opening the books and he is turning the pages you know very fast so they do not know anything what we have to do with the books they are quite confused they are very puzzled you know because they have no idea what place it is the noodle at noodle is adjusting the knobs uh, you know in the mars space control we can see that he is adjusting the knobs i have a close sighting of the space crew sir then he says that you know i have a close sighting and we can see these people and basically if they can see we can also see so the scene is like that that we can see all these people Think Tank puts on a pair of enormous goggles and turns towards the stage to watch. They seem to have entered some sort of earth structure. So everything that is written in the brackets, that is the action that is taking place. So Think Tank he wears, you know, good big goggles and he is just seeing that what is happening, you know, on the earth. Think Tank excellent make voice contact. So they are able to see now they want to set up a voice contact so that he can give instructions to the, you know, people there. Noodle, Noodle speaking into a microphone. Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe One. Mars Space Mars Space Control calling the crew of Probe uh, Probe One. Come in, Captain Omega, and give us your location. So Noodle, like you know, they try to uh, maintain a control. So when we talk to you know <laughs> through the control room, so it's like that controlling you know contacting to Space uh, Probe One. mars space control calling the crew of probe one calling the crew of probe one so they are trying to establish a control and omega omega also speaks into a disc which is on a chain around her like similarly this is my chain and i have a you know microphone like this but she has you know a disc sort of thing where she speaks okay so she is telling what she is saying she is saying captain omega to mars space control lieutenant iota sergeant op and i have arrived on earth without incident we have taken shelter in this indicates room this square place have you any idea where we are left in antiota see omega omega has you know maintained the contact and she is saying that we are trying to you know we have uh, you know reached the earth very safely okay but now we have taken shelter in this you know building so they are in a sort of building and it's a square building 
so but they do not have any idea that where they are so she is you know asking that uh, lieutenant iota do you have any idea that where we are okay then iota i can't figure it out captain holding up a book i have counted 2000 of these peculiar items this place must be some sort of storage barn what do you think sergeant hope and then iota iota ha also has no idea he has been counting books and uh, he is saying that these items are just very strange okay i'm counting these strange strange items they are 2000 in total and it looks like a storage barn to me barn you know barn is a storage place when you know uh, the farmers use the barn to keep the hay and everything so they think that it's a storage place because there are plenty of things here so uh, they she also asked you know he also asked sergeant hope do you have any idea now op i have no clue i have been to seven galaxies but i have never seen anything like this maybe they are hats he opens a book and puts it on his head say maybe this is a haberdashery i have no clue he says that even i don't have any clue i have been to seven galaxies because never in my life i have seen such kind of a things you know books he is not at all you know uh, familiar with the books he is saying basically i think they are hats he opens the book and he puts it on his head and he says i guess this is a haberdashery haberdashery means men clothing store okay he thinks that this is a clothing store for men and you know haberdashery so uh, here he thought that you know this uh, this is a men clothing store that is why we are finding hats here now omega boeing lo perhaps a great and mighty think tank will give us the benefit of his thought on the matter now omega obviously he is expecting his commander in chief to give some you know to put some light on this topic that where they actually are because they are not able to understand anything they thought that maybe he'll you know uh, shed some light on it he'll just tell something about it think tank elementary my dear omega hold one of the items up so that i may view it closely omega holds a book on the palm of her hand yes yes i understand now since our creatures are always eating the places which you find yourself is undoubtedly a crude refreshment stand elementary elementary means ah uh, it's nothing my dear it's nothing my dear it's just a normal thing my dear just hold up the book you know the, the hold up the thing okay close to the camera so he is just saying that you just pointed to like this and after seeing that he says okay 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 now i understand you know these people these people these earthlings they are always eating so maybe the place that you are in it's just a crude refreshment center it's just a rough refreshment center it's nothing more than a refreshment center and these the things the items that you are see here are for eating then omega to iota i know he says we are in a refreshment refreshment stand now uh, they talk to each other oh he says that we are in a refreshment stand are we in a refreshment stand see obviously even they are doubting because they do not actually think that it's a refreshment stand now op well the earthlings certainly have a strange diet op also says oh my god the earthlings have a very strange diet because they are not able to believe that it's a refreshment stand they are not able to believe their ears or eyes that oh my god what kind of a thing it is think tank that item in your hand is called a sandwich so think tank think tank basically tells everybody that it's a sandwich and everybody agrees a oh, sandwich a sandwich a sandwich op a sandwich op also you know he takes the book from his head and he says okay is this a sandwich then think tank explains think tank explains that why does he think that it's a sandwich he thinks it is a sandwich because he thinks that the hard cover of the book is basically the two slices of the bread and the pages which are inside it is a sort of filling so he you know he hence he just uh, reads on a conclusion that you know he reaches on a conclusion that this is a sandwich it resembles a sandwich then omega omega says yes yes that is correct sir it might be a sandwich so he explains that maybe this is a sandwich think tank to confirm my opinion i order you to eat it now think tank think tank is also actually thinking that oh, okay whether I'm, i am correct or not so he you know advises think tank to you know uh, you know the, this omega omega to eat it now omega omega is quite surprised because omega has felt it the books are so hard and he is now gulping 
what eat it i have to eat it then think tank says do you doubt the mighty think tank do you really doubt me are you doubting me are you doubting that i am correct or not that it is a sandwich omega oh no no but poor lieutenant iota has not had her breakfast lieutenant iota i order you to eat this this sandwich now iota he you know omega omega puts this on iota and she tells that you know iota hasn't had the breakfast so uh, it's better that if she eats it then iota iota directs it to sergeant top iota says and how can i eat before sergeant top you know sergeant top he should have it okay he would be the first marshal to eat a sandwich i'm sure but how can i be so impolite as to eat before my sergeant now you know iota puts it on you know sergeant top he says that oh my she says that oh my god how can i eat before him you know i am you know very grateful that i would be the first marshal to eat the sandwich but how can i eat before sergeant um, you know iota uh, sergeant op he should you know have it now now they hand over the book to op and now op op has to eat it now op op also say me me lieutenant do i have to eat it iota and omega saluting yes for the glory of mars op just eat it so they are finally very happy that okay we do not have to eat it and they put every, they put everything on op now op he says yes of course unhappily immediately he opens his mouth why do omega and iota watch him breathlessly he bites down a corner of the book and pantomimes chewing and swallowing while making terrible faces so iota and omega are like that yeah yeah eat it eat it come on come on and they're like Oh, how will he eat it? They are thinking in their mind that oh my God, it's just terrible. It just looks very strange. How is he going to eat it? And you know, Ope on the other hand, Ope is also mm -hmm. um okay. And he is making faces and he has to you know he took a bite. He took a bite of it. He took a bite of it and he was like um. Mm. He was like this because obviously. he says he pantomimes swing he pantomimes swing it is as if you know a childish way of expressing you know like we do it in plays and everything you know cartoonish characters do like that um 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 and he's doing like that and then he swallows omega well op tell me iota well op and then he starts coughing <laughs> because obviously it was so dry it stuck in his it was stuck in his uh, you know throat think tank was it not delicious sergeant op then op says oh uh, that is correct sir it was not at all delicious i don't know why earthlings eat it and how are earthlings able to eat it without water it is just so dry it is just dry as martian dust it is just you know very much dry so we can just understand we can correlate with op that he was not able to eat it properly and then noodle so sir, sir great and mighty think tank i beg your pardon but an insignificant bit of data floated into my mind about those sandwiches see here we can see that noodle is very you know intelligent but noodle he fears of you know think tank he knows that think tank he thinks highly of himself and he's a self obsessed person so it's no, it would not be simple to express his ideas before him that is why he's just fearing and he's saying so you know i just think i have an insignificant bit of idea he's not even able to say that i have a significant big bit of idea although his idea was you know significant it was very important but he is not able to say it. that is why he you know uh, peevishly he says it you know very uh, you know carefully he has to say and think tank also says it can't be worth much yes share it you know it must not be of very much importance just tell me noodle says well sir i have seen surveyor films of those sandwiches i noticed that the earthlings did not eat them they used them as some sort of communication device the noodle says sir you uh, these are not sandwiches basically they do not use them to eat it but they are a sort of communication device think tank hotly ha huh? naturally naturally that was my next opinion these are actually communication sandwiches think tank is never wrong who is never wrong and everybody says yeah think tank think tank think tank is never wrong so think tank what he casually does he casually takes all the credit of what noodle said and he said that yes noodle i was about to say this only this was my second opinion yes yes these are communication devices you know i can never be wrong who is never wrong and everybody says think tank think tank because you know everybody has to please him then think tank therefore i order you to listen it to them okay then he orders omega iota and op to listen to them and what they do that they put you know they uh, take the books and they put it on the uh, ear and everybody is trying to listen to them see 
think tank so everybody does that and omega omega also says that yes we'll do that and then iota omega and op they are trying to listen to it but naturally they are not able to you know uh, listen anything because you know obviously these are books books do not they do not have any voice or something they don't have any sound and op also says not a thing not a thing you know iota and omega or iota and omega they are listening very carefully <laughs> intently they are listening and then op because they are very careful they are very you know they are whispering or op is like not a thing not a thing and everybody jumps out of fear because you know they were very careful and they were you know silently listening and everybody is you know scared of iota's you know op's voice so we can see here that op is you know op is a kind of a person that doesn't hide his feelings he just expresses his feelings just in a jiffy so omega and iota sh 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 and think tank says well report it to me what do you hear then omega says nothing sir perhaps it's not in the correct frequency maybe the earth people the earthlings have sharper ears as compared to us so they think that it's a frequency problem and maybe we are not on the correct frequency we are not able to hear it and op says i don't hear a thing maybe these sandwiches don't make sounds then op you know he concludes that i think that they do not make any sounds iota now uh okay think tank what does somebody suggest the mighty think tank has made a mistake obviously when op says this then this thing then he is you know he uh, gets offended think tank gets offended very easily and he says that are you trying to say that i am wrong are you trying to suggest that i'm wrong and omega says oh no 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 sir we'll keep listening and noodle and noodle again he has an idea and noodle says please excuse me your brilliance but a cloudy piece of information is twirling around in my head he says that you know a cloudy piece of information it's twirling in my head it means that it is you know going on and on in my head and i have a, a piece of information to share with you but as i told you that he's quite scared to share the information and think tank says okay okay call it out i am going to clarify it for you because as i told you that he thinks of him he thinks highly of himself and he actually shows that okay you just tell me your idea i am going to tell what's the meaning of it the noodle i seem to recall that the earthlings did not listen to the sandwiches they opened them and watched them think tank yes that is quite correct i will clarify that clarify that for you captain omega those sandwiches are not for ear communication they are for eye communication so he simply repeats what noodle shares that you know what of i know is that these communication devices we do not listen to them uh, i mean the earthlings do not listen to them they watch them okay so think tank yeah 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 i know i know i will clarify that for you he just repeats the same thing that this book is not for these things are not for uh, ear communication these are for eye communication then think tank now captain omega take that large colorful sandwich over there it appears to be important tell me what you observe omega picks up a very large volume of mother goose holding it so that the audience can see the title iota looks over her left shoulder and op peers over her right shoulder so this thing happens so there we could see a scene where think tank uh, you know he points it out at mother goose now mother goose was maybe it was a very large book and it had it had a large image on it so he thinks think tank he could see it in the camera so he could see that you know it appears to be very important just bring it and it was none other than mother goose so we could see that it was mother goose omega it appears to contain certain pictures of earthlings iota there seems to be some sort of code think tank sharply interested code i told you this was important describe the code now omega omega after looking at the picture he thinks that you know there are some pictures of earthlings in it and iota also says yes 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 i think there is a sort of code in it and we know that there is no code but that is english language but since they are not able to understand that it's english language they think that it is some kind of a code now think tanks he think tanks sharply interested he is very much interested he is seriously interested and he says that you know decipher this code you just tell me that what kind of a code it is oh it's little lines and squiggles and dots you know thousands of them alongside the picture he says that you know it's nothing it's just illegible squiggles means illegible handwriting obviously the martians do not understand the english language the language the written language so they think that it is nothing but it is squiggles squiggles these are you know in uh, you know they uh, th it is illegible handwriting and we cannot read it and for them it is just you know they are just simply 
lines. So think tank says perhaps the earthlings are not as primitive as we have thought. We must break the code. So think tank says that okay, they have a code. It means that they are quite advanced. They are not as primitive as we think. So you just decipher the code for me. So noodle says, forgive me your cleverness, but did not the chemical department give your space people, give our space people vitamins to increase their intelligence? So needle noodle suggests that they should have the chemicals, you know, the chemical department sent some vitamins. They gave some vitamins to IOTA and OPE and every, uh, everybody who was going down to earth, uh, some uh, vitamins which can make them intelligent. So it was also a funny thing, you know, it's going to make them intelligent. Think Tank, Think Tank again repeats the same thing and he takes the whole credit that yes, what you do is that you take the vitamins which, was, which is going to increase your intelligence and immediately and just take out those vitamins and just eat them. Then Omega, it shall be done, sir. Remove vitamins. Crew takes vitamins from boxes on their belts. Present vitamins, they hold vitamins out in front of them stiffly. Swallow vitamins, they pop the vitamins into their mouth and gulp simultaneously. They open their eyes wide, their heads shake, and they put their hands to their foreheads. So what do they do? Omega, Omega also, you know, he gives a command that, take out the vitamins, they take out the vitamins, then they hold them, then they eat them, they gulp them, then they swallow, you know, they gulp it, they swallow it, and they're like, then they open, uh, they open their eyes wide, and what they do, they shake their heads, <sighs> like we see in the cartoons, in the cartoons, they don't simply eat the medicines, they are like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, like that, so they are doing like that, they're enacting it like that, that okay, you know, because they actually show that immediately after taking the vitamins, their intelligence has been increased. So they are holding their foreheads. Think tank. Excellent. Now decipher the code. Now decipher that code. It means that, you know, uncode that thing. You know, just tell the code, the meaning of that code. All, it shall be done, sir. They frown over the book and turning pages. Now, they're doing like that. Omega, brightly. Aha. Oh, now they are giving the expressions because they're reading the book and they're like, aha. Oh, ho. <laughs> so that is their reaction. And Think Tank says, what does it say? Tell me this instant. Transcribe. Omega. Now Think Tank. Think Tank is getting excited that why are they behaving like that? Why are they doing ooh, ha, 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 ha. And they just immediately tell me this instant. Tell me at this very moment what have you seen. Uh, Omega. Yes, sir. She reads with great seriousness. Mistress Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? With cockle chins and silver bells and pretty maids all in a, all in a row. Say, children, what is... Written in Mother Goose is a rhyme. It is a nursery rhyme and we know that the nursery rhymes do not make any sense. The nursery rhymes, they are imaginative. They are just, you know, a figment of imagination of the writer. They are very fictional and they can be, they are very imaginative. They are mysterious and they write anything, anything to, you know, make children laugh or make them play or anything. So such kind of a thing is written. But we will see here that they take everything very seriously, whatever it is written. So here it was written, Mistress Mary, quite contrary. How does your garden grow? How does your garden grow? So it was written that Mistress Mary, she grows cockle shells and silver bells and even maids in her garden. So it was written. Oh, ha, 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 imagine pretty maids are growing in the garden. So he's like, ha, 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 what's written? Now Think Tank, Think Tank is alarmed. He becomes very serious. He's like, oh my God, oh my God, stop. This is no time for levity. Don't you realize the seriousness of this discovery? The earthlings have discovered how to combine agriculture and mining. They can actually grow crops of rare materials such as silver and cockle shells. They can grow high explosives too. Noodle contactor invasion fleet. See. Think Tank is very much alarmed. As I told you that Think Tank, Think Tank, as we know that he is not very intelligent. So everything that was written in the book, he took it very seriously. He took that, he took it for real. He thought that everything that was written is, it has a literal meaning. He doesn't understand it, doesn't have a literal meaning. So he thought that, oh my God, earthlings, they have the technology of combining agriculture and mining because only after mining can we extract metals. But they have combined it. They know how to grow uh, cockle shells. They know how to, you know, grow uh, precious materials because silver is a precious uh, metal. So they know how to grow it. Maybe they know how to grow high explosives too. So uh, Noodle, just contact our invasion fleet. The invasion fleet was about to attack them, the attacking fleet. So he says that we must 
stop our attacking fleet because the earthlings are very much advanced noodles they are ready to go down and take over earth sir but our invasion fleet is ready think tank tell them to hold tell them new information has come us about the earth iota transcribe now think tank says no 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 new information has come you know it's a quite a new information we have just come to know that earth is very much advanced just stop them just stop them from you know uh, attacking the earth iota yes sir she reads very gravely now iota is reading hey diddle diddle the cat and the fiddle the cow jumped over the moon the little dog laughed to see such sport and the dish ran away with the spoon so as i told you that it doesn't make a you know we cannot make head and tail of the rhymes so it was written that cat and the fiddle the cow jumped over the moon and the little dog was laughing and the dish i mean the plate ran away with the spoon so you know that these all are nothing it's nothing it doesn't have a literal meaning but now op op also ran op again he started laughing and was like the dish ran away with the spoon how can it happen but think tank cease laughter stop laughing desist stop stop this nonsense what are you doing this is more and more alarming this is more and more threatening it is very much threatening okay it is very much threatening the earthlings have reached a high level of civilization didn't you hear they are highly civilized they have taught their domesticated animals musical culture and space techniques space techniques it means that the earth has even taught the their cows because it was written that the, that the cow jumped over the moon he said that you know they have you know uh, taught their cows to uh, you know these space techniques and the cows can even reach over the moon and their dogs even they even have a sense of humor because it was written uh, that the little dog was laughing so he took it seriously that yes the dogs are capable of you know having a sense of humor and at this very moment maybe they are launching you know hundreds of cows millions of cows because he thought that yes seriously they are sending the cows for the space to the space station notify the invasion fleet no invasion today op transcribe the next code so they say you know transcribe the next course we uh, code we should stop the invasion there and then because the earth is very much civilized op oh, yes sir reading humpty dumpty sat on the wall humpty dumpty had a great fall great fall all the king's horses and all the king's men cannot put humpty together again oh look sir here is a picture of humpty dumpty why sir he looks like he looks like turns out the picture of humpty dumpty towards the think tank and the audience yes sir now he read our favorite poem humpty dumpty we all know this poem humpty dumpty now he was reading humpty dumpty and as soon as he was reading this Humpty Dumpty's picture was there, and he thought, "Oh my God, sir! It just looks like it just looks like oh, it just looks like." And think, "Oh my God!" Ah! He just starts screaming. He starts shouting. He starts shouting, and he says, "Oh my God!" It is me. It is me. So basically, what we had just learned. that you know this think tank just looks like humpty dumpty because he had a head like that of an egg he had a big head and even humpty dumpty had uh, you know a head like an egg so he thought it's me he said it's me it's me the mighty balloon brain the earthlings have seen me and they are after me had a great fall that means they plan to capture mars center control and it's me it's an invasion of mars so think tank began the thing thinking he began thinking that you know maybe they have seen me it means that they have seen me and they have drawn my picture and they have written that i had a great fall i had a great fall means that i i was defeated it means that they are you know uh, planning to attack on mars that is why they have written that i am going to have a great fall and nobody can actually mend me so he was quite alarmed after this that was the last nail in the coffin now think tank think tank noodle prepare a space capsule for me i must escape without delay space people you must leave earth at once but be sure to remove all traces of your visit the earthlings must know that i know omega iota and op rush about putting books back on the shelves so as i told you it was the last nail in the coffin and now think tank was very much alarmed he was just very much serious he thought that yes earth you know the earthlings are actually going to invade on mars and he says that space people you just leave earth at once the earthlings must not know you should not leave any traces you must not leave any proof there and they must know that 
I know that I know that they're planning to attack on Earth. And then everybody leaves. Everybody leaves. Iota, Omega, and Ope, they reach the, uh, there. And, uh, you know, Think Tank is also, you know, commanding the people that a capsule should be ready. I should run away from here. Noodle. Noodle says, where shall we go, sir? Where are we going? Think Tank. A hundred million miles away from Mars. Order the invasion fleet to evacuate the entire planet of Mars. We are heading for Alpha Century. A hundred million miles away, Omega, Iota, and Op run off right as Noodle helps Think Tank off lit and the curtain closes, spotlight shines on Historian down right. So in the closing scene, we could see that hundred million miles, he says that we are going to go as far as possible because Earthlings might, you know, attack on us any moment and we should not be here present. So we have to, you know, uh, tell the invasion fleet that they have to evacuate the whole planet. The whole planet should be empty. We all should, you know, leave. We should all go to Alpha Century. Alpha Century, you know, now the closest star. Okay, it's the closest star to the Earth. So he says that, yes, we should go to Alpha Century and we should start living there. We are not safe on Mars because any time they can come. And then the curtain closes and then we, you know, the scene comes to the historian back again. Historian is chuckling. Chuckling means he's laughing. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> you know, and that's how one dusty old book of nursery rhymes saved the world from a Martian invasion. As you all know, in the 25th century, 500 years after all this happened, we Earthlings resumed contact with Mars and we even became very friendly with the Martians. So now she says that, you know, this is how we were saved. This is how one dusty old book of nursery rhymes saved the earth, saved the earth, otherwise Martians would have attacked. And now you know that, you know, after 500 years, after 500 years, we are very good friends of Martians. So it's a very big thing. It's a very good thing that we have maintained, you know, contact with Mars and we are very friendly. By that time, great and mighty think tank uh, had been replaced by a very clever Martian, the wise and wonderful Noodle. Oh yes, we taught the Martians the difference between sandwiches and books. We taught them how to read too and we established a model library in the capital city of Marsopolis. So he also tells that, you know, now think tank, think tank was an idiot. He was foolish. He had been replaced by Noodle. Noodle who was wise, who was intelligent. And, you know, Noodle was the one who was able to understand the whole situation. But Think Tank, you know, he ridiculed uh, the Mars Space Probe Center. So he says that even, you know, we have taught them the difference between sandwiches and books. They no longer think that books are sandwiches. And we have also taught them how to read. Even we have, you know, set up a library there on Marsopolis. So Marsopolis is the capital of Mars. Historian, but as you might expect, there is still one book that the Martians can never bring themselves to read. You have guessed it right, Mother Goose. She bows and exits right. So she says that, you know, everybody knows how to read, but they still are not able to, you know, they do not have courage to read that book. And you have guessed it right. Yes, they are not able to read Mother Goose. They can read every book, but they're not able to read this book. And then she bows and she exits. So this is how the play ends. This is how the drama ends. So this drama was very comic. So here we see it's completely a fictional story. But yes, we loved it a lot. So now let's come to the important key points. So the important key points, the historian welcomes visitors to the Museum of Ancient History in the 25th century. So we can see an historian from the 25th century. And she informs them that how a book, see 20th century, which was called an uh, era of book. In that era of book, a book saved Earth from an invasion in 2040. The ruler of Mars at that time was Think Tank. It saved them. Then they go to the flashback. And in the flashback, we could see Think Tank, the ruler, he sends a probe to Earth. He sends a mission to Earth. And we could also see Noodle there. They make guesses. Okay, the probe team reaches the library but are puzzled to see books. They make guesses. One of them calls them hats. So the probe, as we know, that the probe team reaches a library and they're very much puzzled. They are very much confused that what these things are actually are. And they make their guesses. Some of them tell that it's a hat. Then Think Tank, then Think Tank very proudly says that no, these are not hats, these are sandwiches. And he orders the, uh, you know, Iota to eat it. The trainee under Think Tank Noodle points out that they may be used for communication. Then in the end, you know, in the end, it means uh, then, then Noodle, Noodle gives a piece of advice that, sir, these are, you know, not uh, something to eat. These are communication devices. 
think tank orders them to listen to the communication devices when they can't hear anything noodle says that the earthlings watch them then it is you know uh known that these are not ear communication these are not for ear communication but for eye communication think tank asks his crew to watch them but they cannot understand the pictures or the lines of writing since they are not you know familiar with the english language they are not able to read it then they are ordered to eat the vitamins the vitamins that the chemical you know department had given them which will increase their intelligence and after consuming those vitamins they are able to read rhymes and words like shell silver dog laughing cow jumped over the moon think tank assumes that earthlings were a very advanced civilization he thinks that oh my god these are not primitive people their civilization is very much advanced then he is further terrified when he sees the picture of humpty dumpty he assumes that humpty dumpty is me and the earth is you know planning to invade on mars he orders the martian fleet that they should evacuate mars and he decides to you know flee to uh, you know alpha century and in the 25th century the historian says that the people of earth and martians are the people of earth and the people of mars are now friends they have a friendly contact we have taught them the difference between sandwiches and books now they know how to read the books but still they are not able to read one book and that is mother goose so okay now see the most important thing is that this is from your latest sample paper okay this is from your sample paper so in the sample paper you have been given an rtc okay you have been given a context and you have to answer the questions accordingly okay so there is a context here omega omega the dialogue of omega comes when he takes the vitamins and everything and you know they take the medicine uh, the vitamins and they start laughing so this is the paragraph here so the first question is select the option that correctly captures the usage of the word present from line 1 of the extract see there is a word here present present vitamins see first of all you have to understand the meaning of the question the meaning of the question is select the option that correctly captures the usage of the word present from line 1 of the extract ops received a nice present from think tank iota needs to present his opinion firmly omega must focus on the present and leave the past behind oops didn't know anyone even though a crowd was present see first of all you must understand that the word present it has multiple meanings you know word the word present has four meanings the first meaning is present means to be present to be available okay i am present here then present also means the tense present tense present tense means the present tense that is going on the third means present gift it means gift and the fourth thing means to present something to present something to bring something in front so present has multiple meanings and multiple meanings have been given to you they have been explained by giving an example so whatever meaning present has in that paragraph you have to tell that which of these matches that meaning okay so present has multiple meanings if you read all these lines every line has a different meaning of present you have to select that what meaning you know it resembles the meaning given in the extract so this is, this would be your question so such kind of questions you would be getting so this is your homework you have to do it then the second question is complete the analogy by selecting the suitable word from the text so frown smile frown and smile you know that frown and smile they are synonyms and gloomily gloomily is a word given to you you have to you know identify a word from the text you have to select a word from the text which is synonym synonym of gloomily okay so you have to find a word which is opposite in the meaning to gloomily then the third question select the option that displays the reason why all crew members were asked to have vitamins why were they asked to have vitamins multiple reasons are given to you you have to tell the correct reason boost their physical energies adapt to their circumstances quickly turn all the pages or accomplish a specific task so why they were given the vitamins that you have to choose then the fourth question according to the extract what did think tank most likely want omega to do when he said transcribe so they are basically asking the meaning of transcribe so five meanings have been given to you five purposes have been given to you that why the word transcribe was used you have to select 
one of those was it one and three was it two and four was it only three or was it one four and five so this you have to tell so this would be your homework these kind of questions you would be getting in your exam so you can see here that the questions are related even to your grammar they are also checking your knowledge of vocabulary that what kind of you know vocabulary you have so your vocabulary should also vocabulary should also be developed properly in order to answer these questions i hope that you understood this play very well and you found it very funny and you understood it and if you have any doubts you can ask in the comment section thank you so much for this lovely session we'll meet you in the next class till then take care bye bye